Um, yeah, it's just, it's not, we don't support each other enough. Mm. Um, and I think that can be, that should be changed. Cause like, we're not necessarily all after the same goal, but we're artists or musicians from the same city. We should be supporting each other just because. You're listening to the Gab Street Podcast, Columbus, Ohio's number one podcast for underground talent. Every week we have new conversations with interesting individuals who contribute to the Columbus economy and its lively culture. You may find just what you're looking for right in your backyard. Let's get right into it. We are back with another Wednesday morning edition of your favorite Gab Street Podcast, the number one podcast for underground talent in the United States, no, uh, in Columbus, Ohio. Almost there, almost there to the United States. Someday. Someday. We have a co-host you've heard before. His name is Alex from Revolter Pictures. Say hello. Hello, I'm Alex from Revolter Pictures. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if you remember uh, from episode, I don't remember um, what episode that was. It's been well, so long. Me. But uh, he helped us uh, interview Pre Dead Boys, which is another Columbus podcast. So if you haven't checked out that episode, go ahead and do that now. Or, well, finish this episode first and then go ahead and check that one out. Um, we have a guest today that is a little bit out of my current realm of knowledge. And that's part of why I wanted to interview her today uh, so that I could educate myself on maybe a different part of the Columbus music scene. She goes by Faye, say hello. Hi. What kind of music do you do, Faye? Indie pop rock. Mystical indie pop rock, Mystical, is that yes, mystical I, indie pop rock. I saw that it was it was mystical on, uh, on your website, and I was like, okay, okay, this is a vibe that I can, I <laughs> yes. can get into, this is cool. So, uh, tell us, what is your background and how does it influence the music that you make? Um, background, well, I've, I grew up just listening to like classic rock, a lot of Fleetwood Mac. Mm. Um, I want to say like bluesy, but not super bluesy. Like, um, I don't know what you would classify like Leonard Skinner. Like, you know how they're kind of bluesy? Yeah, little... it's... I mean, it's it's really I think the best way is just like that southern rock because you get the the, the real yeah. blues influences. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's basically what you just said. <laughs> well, yeah. But yeah, I think I think southern rock because they're like they're country, but they're also so much more than that. Not yeah. that country is a small genre by any means, but like, yeah, I think southern rock's probably the best way that I can think of to describe them. For sure, yeah. Um, I grew up listening to a lot of southern rock. So that's really influenced me a lot. Um, and then I've just, I'm a really like mystical person. I'm a Pisces and I just like, I, it's just fun to like believe in like imaginary things. Um, so I just tie that together with what I like to write. And that's just really like a lot of minor chords, um, songs that you, you can like vibe to, relate to, um, and feel a lot listening to them. Um, yeah, so did that answer your question? Yeah, I think so. <laughs> okay. Cool. I, I think it's, it's really cool to add that on yourself because if you, if you, you know, a lot of music right now, you have to try and present it the best that you can to get people interested in it. Oh yeah. And so if, if you call yourself indie pop rock, it's like, I've heard a hundred thousand different indie pop rock bands, but you had mystical on there and then I'm like, okay. I'm intrigued. I gotta see what that is. <laughs> I'm so glad, like, that's... I'm glad, okay. I'm glad you said that. <laughs> Market feedback. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, what makes you a unique artist in Columbus, would you say? Ooh. And that's a tough question. That's a so. good question. Um, hmm. I guess... You said you've been doing it since you were four as well. Yeah. So. I'm just really experienced with it. And, like, it's just been in my blood, like, performing, singing, like, the whole aspect. Like, I just, I know how to do it. Um, I guess what makes me unique would be I want to really involve, like, the people who are interested in my music and not just have them, like, 
I don't know, like, I want a community. I want people involved. I want to know people um, can feel connected and loved and, like, wanted by listening to my music. Um, and you don't really see a lot of that. Um, yeah, I noticed that on most of your social media, it's less of a focus on the music itself and more about, you know, creating that whole, that, like you said, community vibe around yeah. it. And something I noticed that was really cool that I don't see a lot is that you are very authentic and open about everything on there. And a lot of people are too scared to do that, uh, namely me uh, <laughs> and a lot of other people. Um, so that's that's something I, I immediately noticed and respected. And I've just been like, I'll see your posts come up and they're very engaging. And I, I think the way that you, one, one other thing, as someone who runs a social media account, from that side of things, your marketing is fantastic. I think the way that you uh, throw together the visuals um, on each of your posts and the way that you advertise like 20 with Faye, uh, which we'll get into here in a minute, um, I think it's it's very well done uh, and you. it always captivates my attention. So I'm man, this is already <laughs> like super awesome. Yeah. That's what Thank we you. do around here. Yeah. <laughs> Let's talk about 20 with Faye. So I remember you said uh, that on, on your website. Mm -hmm. that you would do like three hour gigs in yeah. uh, in Texas, right? Um, um, not in Texas. But you, you've played in Texas before. Is that I, I getting something? No, you're right. Okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> if you try to remember it wrong, wrong it's gonna kill him. <laughs> 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 but, but you have done like these three hour sets where you mm -hmm. have to just keep going with yeah. just like a mic, a guitar, and you, you mm -hmm. know? So tell me a little bit more about that. Yeah. Um, I started doing that in 2017 as like a part-time job. Um, it's really, it's tough though, cause like you have to play, you have to like switch up material um, depending on like what venue you're gonna play at. And um, there's not always a big crowd or an audience at all. Um, but like I, I get two breaks during that, so like two 15 minute breaks, so it's not like all the way through. Um, but yeah, it was mostly just for a part-time job. I got kind of burnt out on it. So, um, which that's not the reason why I took a break in 2018. Um, but yeah, I just, I stopped. And then um, I took a break and I'm kind of glad I did because like that whole year, I just kind of stepped back and I was like, okay, well, is this like something I want to pursue and like make my career? Um, and that like the end of 2018, I just, I came to realize like, I really do love music and it's something that um, I need to at least try to make a steady career out of. Um, and so like January rolled around and it was just like, all hands on deck and like full force. But um, yeah, it was mostly just for a part-time job. Okay. Yeah. What kind of places did you do it at? Like, was it like bars or like, mm -hmm. okay. It was bars. Um, I played a few festivals, small festivals, nothing huge. Um, you know, like Homestead and stuff like that, right? Homestead. Or am I thinking of something else? I saw that they were following you, so I didn't know. Oh, um, I've never played there. What is Homestead? Uh, I think it's a festival up north or something like okay. that. Probably totally wrong, but <laughs> <laughs> shout out Full Send Band because they think they've played there before. But, yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, just a couple small festivals. I played wedding receptions, a um, yeah. few coffee shops. Yeah. I saw you played at Scully's before. Did you have to switch to hardcore gangster rap for those shows? <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Uh. <laughs> no, I know they take other genres, but every show I've been to there. I actually saw um, Slum Village there a little bit ago. Else? Do either of you know who Slum Village no. is? No. I will not go further on that tangent. Um, <laughs> Scully's is a pretty diverse place. Like, I've seen Watsky and We Were Promised Jetpacks there. Oh, sure. Sure, yeah. On two vastly different, yeah. yeah, two completely different realms of the spectrum. There, <laughs> shout out my high school friend Dylan Davis, also known as uh, Miles Davis with dollar signs. Um, he, <laughs> yes, it's a great name. He uh, he has performed there once as well, and uh, 
I don't think he's been there since, but I thought I <laughs> thought I'd give my high school friend a little shout out there. Um, <laughs> So, how was that experience at Scully's? Because um, I imagine, I've heard that Scully's booking and stuff is, is a little different from most other venues around here and things like that. It's a little bit different of a vibe, so. Um, it's definitely different. Kind of confusing when it comes to, like, the ticket sales and everything. Yeah. But, um, it was good. It was my first full band show, so I was kind of nervous, but, um. Who's in your band? My bassist, Anthony Crawford, and my drummer, uh, Brad Colley. So I'm kind of, I'm still debating whether or not I want to like add a guitarist or something, but yeah, like it was, it was a lot of fun. Everybody liked us. Um, yeah, I'm just excited mm -hmm. to like get better at the whole full band thing. Um, How did you meet them? How do you work off of each other as a band? Yeah, we work really well. Yeah. Um, I met Anthony I've kind of known I think it's like a friends of friends type of thing and then Brad I met over Facebook um so I was in like dire need of a drummer so I was just like everywhere I turn I was like looking for a drummer and um he popped up and we got together and we just vibed really well and yeah so that's cool yeah that's sweet um, one thing I wanted, so earlier when we were uh, setting up the questions, I was like, oh, we're going to talk about this for a long time because um, I, part of your vibe, I guess, part of your aesthetic is, like I watched uh, the one vlog episode that you had on, uh, on YouTube about how you, like why you do music, how you got into it and stuff like that. And I think part of your, this also goes with 20 with Faye, because I imagine with like uh, doing the three hour gigs and such, um, 20 with Faye, it's like... 20 minutes. 20 which, minutes. Yeah. Okay. But it would be like five or six songs. Uh, so I imagine that's part of your practicing process too, you know, mm -hmm. with uh, the 20 minutes with Definitely. Like playing five or six songs in a row. Yeah. So I think a big part of that that I've seen with a lot of artists around here and I think is a great... Uh, trend with artists in general coming up is showcasing the process as part of the art. Yeah. And a lot of people like back in, I don't know, 70s or 80s or something, you would just see TV and you would see like the final product. This would be all, the culmination of all the work. And, you know, the journey is most of it. Mm -hmm. And I think that that wasn't really showcased a lot in history. Uh, and I think it's important that, you know, showing the development process is part of the art itself and i think you you do that as well would you say that's true yeah 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 because you you really only got the peek behind the curtain on like either something that was like super sanitized like through the label mm -hmm. or something where everything went wrong like metallica saint anger on that some kind of monster documentary if you've either of you have ever seen that <laughs> It's it's one of the most fascinating fascinating documentaries I've ever seen about an album that's pretty much critically reviled. Um, really? Their their album Saint Anger from two thousand and three wasn't it like the loudest album ever or something. <sighs> oh, and it was the drums sounded like trash cans. Like the way that they mixed them was so bad. But the whole documentary is about just all of these. E it, yeah, that's that's a completely different peek behind the curtain kind of a thing. But you're right, like. You did, didn't really get to see that until people started using social media and making it a lot easier for you to show like your thought process and everything. Mm -hmm. and I remember the one thing I, I know about what you're talking about is uh, I was talking to Luke Chioka the other day. Shout out. He's one of the best uh, producers in the city. Um, but he was educating me on uh, loudness standards <laughs> in, in music because he was like, your episodes, you kind of you need to fix them up a little bit. And I'm like, okay, cool. So um, he was telling me about the history of it and how like Metallica released this album that was just so awfully mixed and peaking audio the entire album. Because they were like, we're just going to make the loudest shit ever. <laughs> that, that probably was saying anger then. I don't know yeah. if that had anything to do with why, because I don't, I love music and I, I, you know, did music, but I don't know enough about music to get into anything like that. Like, I'm... Yeah. <laughs> well, apparently they released it and they, it, like, 
triggered laws to come out <laughs> as to how how loud it was allowed awesome. to be, which I think is hilarious. <laughs> it would either have to be that or death magnetic, and I don't think death magnetic was that poorly mixed. Yeah, but I do know I do know what you're talking about because that's why like. I know Spotify has specific rules on that so that like because people were making their music sound way too loud and like when you had a mix you'd go from like a song that you had to have like all the way up to here to like all the way down here yeah. <laughs> when Congress is like guys calm down that's right. when you know that you have to bring it down a, a notch at least <laughs> yeah no, apparently Spotify has uh, has problems with like making the the, the quality of the sound pretty bad because they have to it, it's an automatic algorithm that'll bring your song to i think ne minus 20 decibels or something <laughs> but wherever it is that you submit it it will do whatever it can to bring it there hmm. so it can either peak the hell out of your audio or it can make it super quiet so i've heard that's a that's an issue with a lot of people again shout out Lucioka because he know he is basically an encyclopedia on this stuff so i appreciated that that educational uh session there have you used spotify like putting any of your music on there or anything or? yeah um i actually had a complication with my name so i had to take everything down um but i had i submitted a single it takes a while. It was through CD Baby, but it takes them a while because of like royalties and everything mm -hmm. for it to go live on there. But it should be live soon, and then after that, I'll get the profile all set up. And yeah, so cool. fingers crossed for like this week or something. So you have no idea yet if they're going to do the same thing to yours or not. True. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was just, I was just going to ask like, do you, like here we are talking about this. You as the artist, do you have any input on this? <laughs> Like, if you're just like, yeah, I know all about this, and we're just sitting over here just talking about it as two people who aren't involved in that side, <laughs> just, just deferring to the expert. <laughs> well, let's, uh, let's get into something that we all know, because we all live here in this wonderful city of Columbus, Ohio. While it may be flat, it is cultured. So, uh, <laughs> we have a couple hills, okay? It's all right. Um... I wanted to ask uh, what your opinion on this question of what makes Columbus a unique city to make music in. And I, everybody's had a different answer so far, so I was wondering what you would think about that. You have good questions. Well, thank you. <laughs> um, hmm. Seeing as you have played in Texas before and other places, so comparing the, the atmosphere, I guess. Yeah. Wow. Um... See, like in Nashville, people expect to hear live music, like everywhere. Um, and Texas, eh, that was like, sort of, like, it's not as appreciated as it would be in Nashville. Um, Texas is more like, I don't know, like I wasn't... I didn't visit the whole state, but... What part of Texas were you in? Um, Austin. Oh, okay. That's the only part of Texas I've actually been to. Yeah. <laughs> um, but see, like, I went there for the CD Baby Music Conference. Um, yeah, so it's like, it's not as appreciated as Nashville was, but, like, Columbus, it's just... I don't know. I don't want to say it's not appreciated. It's just not like recognized um and that goes for like a lot of states hmm. you know like california you just kind of like expect to go there and see like actors and musicians and everything uh nashville's like music city um i don't know hmm. i've been told that the crowds here are really good though which is yeah an, an interesting difference but like supporting like fans are more supportive maybe we're just more inebriated <laughs> so we're louder that's, in the audience <laughs> that's definitely a possibility i so many craft beers you know yeah. you gotta, gotta get something out of it <laughs> and plus there's like a lot of just different good artists like there's no like we're not known for just one genre 
That's true. Yeah, yeah. That, that definitely helps because, like, Nashville, you definitely think of, like, country, mm-hmm. a little bit of that more southern rock, but, like, yeah, and then Texas. Well, I don't know because, yeah, because Austin, Austin at least, at least you've got, like, S, what, S, S, I, I can never pronounce it, South by Southwest. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. So, you know, like, that's got, like, it's all, like, kind of alt vibes to it, but then, like, the whole surrounding area you just think is, like, cowboys and <laughs> 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 banjos. <laughs> I don't know if not having, like, a Columbus genre is something that brings us down or brings us up. I can't really tell if that's the case or not. Yeah. Because clearly we aren't on the mainstream yet. That mm-hmm. is that is apparent. Mm-hmm. But I feel like there's some else we can get out of that without having to funnel into one specific like specialty but uh, um, what are your opinions on that because I mean it's for me it's been a rap city so far but like it's also not right. because we have we have probably a lot more people who are playing alt rock than are rapping too mm-hmm. so yeah, and and see like I'm I know I'm a, 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 a decent amount older than you. Um, <laughs> when I was like, you know, growing up and in like late high school, early college, and everything, like the big thing at the time was metalcore. Like you had mm-hmm. like Attack Attack coming out, really? and you had yeah, like here? yeah. Oh, okay. That's you had cool. like I can't even remember the the record label's name now, but it was basically the joke was like, you just drop everybody's guitars into drop D, you get yourself like uh, two two things on the drum kit, and you're gonna get sw- uh, swept up by them. I cannot for the life of me remember the record label, but that was like huh. the big joke was like that was every show like every kid was wearing the skinny jeans. And they were screaming, like practicing their vocals and stuff. <laughs> like, no, yeah. That's really cool. I so, had no idea about that. It, it kind of died out a little bit. Yeah. It kind of got swept away. But I, I definitely, I think there's a pretty good balance between like alt rock and rap, at least in what yeah, I see too. for local shows. Yeah. Because like you've got, I mean, even some metal bands, like you've got Harmless Habit and Black Coffee mm. coming out who are huge. Uh, my friend Nick's in both of those bands. <laughs> um, and then you've got, like, Alt Rock that's really popular. I mean, you've got Southern, WYD. My friend Carly's in both of those bands. Nice. Um, oh, yeah, you mentioned Southern before. Yeah. <laughs> like, I think there's a, a very good balance of both of those things. But I don't think that that necessarily hurts. Yeah. Because... Especially, yeah, like, I totally agree because... I didn't mean to cut you off. No, 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 you're <laughs> fine. I was kind of trailing. <laughs> um... Like, the industry is even more so... Well, like, it's a do-it-yourself now. Like, you don't need a major label to put music out. That is true. Um, and so that's just going to get, like, more prominent. Um, we are all about that in Columbus. Yeah. All about that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, there is a label presence, but we are mostly, like... Especially on this show, too, we'll always be talking about independent is the way to go. Mm-hmm. Um, like, I... I uh, Music brands, the the Raina Montgomery in Asia, they are part of Music Brands, which is a like an it's it's a managing company for independent artists, mm-hmm. and that's like it's like the first of its kind. So I think that having that, you know what, that's what Columbus will be. What yes. is the the epicenter of like being independent? Well, I guess. Okay. I don't know, because I also listen to um, Super Duty Tough Work podcast with Blueprint, and he uh, is a like the one of the most successful um, Columbus. He might be the most successful Columbus independent artist ever to come out of the city. Mm-hmm. Um, and he does this. I don't know why he does it, because it probably loses him and a lot of other people money. But um, he does. He does this show where he will basically lay out every single thing you need to do to be an independent artist properly and make a living off of it. So, uh, for free, it's free. It's completely free. Um, so I just, they joke about it all the time on there. They're like, we're just giving away free money basically. (laughs) Uh, I don't know why we do this, but, um, yeah, I think Columbus is, is a music city. Uh, it hasn't found a specific music identity, which is cool. Um, we just need to be like 
Columbus is the label. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, <laughs> well, I mean, and it, it doesn't necessarily have to have a specific one because, like, you think of, like, New York, like, how many vastly different genres of music have come out of anywhere in New York? Mm-hmm. Like, obviously, some of the cities are a little heavier one way or the other. Yeah. But, like everything's come out of there. So there's no there's no reason to say that Ohio can't be the same way. Exactly. Especially when there's so many other you know, I've I've recently found out how great the film industry is here, yes. you know. Yes. How how great people making art in this city are. Like it it can be a multimedia explosion. It doesn't have to be yes. one thing or the other or one specific thing. Yes. How interconnected is the alt-rock community in Columbus that you've seen? Like, how many people do you, do you, uh, like, do people reach out to you to collaborate with them and things like that? Is it that kind of tight-knit thing? Or is it more of a, we're kind of all on our own wave? Um, no. And that's what I want to change. Yeah. Um. Like, everybody is kind of more on their own wave? Yeah. Yeah. It's not... Man, I'm trying to think of the right words. Um, yeah, it's just, it's not, we don't support each other enough. Mm. Um, and I think that can be, that should be changed. Cause like, we're not necessarily all after the same goal, but we're artists, we're musicians from the same city. We should be supporting each other just because. Um, yeah. Yeah. And that is one thing that I've heard a lot of your guests that are more on the rap side say mm. is, I don't remember who specifically said it, the finish line thing? Uh, Asia. Is, Asia? Yeah, okay. I think so. Where they're very supportive on that side. Mm. They all support each other, right? Or am I just talking? Yeah, okay. no, they definitely <laughs> Just making do. sure. No, like, so. uh, when you go to Declassified, you'll see a rapper go up on stage and have, like, their entire crew behind them, like, hands on their shoulders. They're jumping, <laughs> like... That's awesome. It's, it's, it's awesome, and it's crazy, and... <laughs> And it's the only place I've ever seen things like that happen. Yeah. And I think that could apply to everything uh, around here. Yeah. Like, you know, even corporate business meetings, they're all just standing up there with a the microphone. Oh, yeah. I, I no. think that's a great uh, idea. <laughs> <laughs> but just the thought of, like, uh, one of the, um, do you know Booty and the Kid, by any chance, the band around here? Mm-hmm. They're like a, I think, seven to nine piece. I forget how many people that it is. It's a lot. Yeah, it's a lot of people. <laughs> it's like a jazz hop singing, I don't know, neo soul, I think, is what is what it's classified as. And they did a show with, uh, or they, they did an album and a few songs with Camp, uh, which is another uh, artist from around here. And I saw their album release show like last year. And it was so refreshing to see someone outside of the rap world doing like a collaborative thing on stage and like working with each other. Yeah. And the only, the only other person I can think of in, in mainstream music that is part of more of the rock genre that has worked with a lot of people is like Dave Grohl, you know? That is true. Yeah. Yeah. Like he has played with so many people and like even think of all the, all the splinter, like, like, uh, spinoff bands that came from Rage Against the Machine. Oh yeah. (laughs) Like, uh, Audio Slave was definitely a huge thing. Um, that's the one I can think of right now, but like, you know what I mean? A lot, a lot came from that. Temple of the Dog. Yeah. That was a bunch of a bunch of people together to commemorate a guy's life too. Like yeah. the sing, lead singer from Mother Love Bone. Like he died and they made that band. Yeah. Um, but do it. Let's do it here. Let's do I it mean, here. I I do think you are seeing a little bit more of that. Like even just on the way over here, uh, my Spotify. You know, every Friday they give you your, your new songs or whatever. Uh, yeah. And I found out that Foxing did a collaboration with Mike Shinoda from Linkin Park. Oh, shit. And I don't know yeah. if you know who Foxing is. <laughs> I don't. They're like a straight emo band. Like, okay. like emo, like all the songs are like very depressing. Well, not all the songs, but like... Like Every Rose Has Its Thorns kind of... <laughs> <laughs> like, no, more, more like wailing vocals, like not at all the artists you would anticipate working with Mike Shinoda. Okay. Because, you know, he was very like he's a rapper yeah you know, basically so uh, i i think i think people are willing to experiment but 
it's definitely always good to see more people experimenting. <laughs> Whenever I hear his name, all I can think of is Mike Shinoda. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so I can never take it seriously. Uh, <laughs> but collab culture is cool. And I like one other, we were going to do an episode, but uh, scheduling ended up falling out. Um, Carried by Six is a group of rappers from here that kind of like became their own like Columbus Wu Tang kind of thing, where it was a, it was four artists that I had already known and respected: uh, Trek Manifest, Dom Deshawn, Joey H, and Sarab, and then the two art the two uh, producers, uh, Snow and Soup. Um, they I know they're it's great. I love them. Um, but they just like, you know, I have a Wu-Tang poster up here. They all, they got together and they're like rapping with each other and like pumping each other up the whole time. And it, it's probably easier with rap <laughs> because you, you just have the instruments done for you already. Mm-hmm. You're not actively trying to do that. So there, you know, Occam's Razor, it was just easier to do that. Uh, most likely that's probably why, but I think once we put in the effort to have more collaboration in other genres that will spark a a bigger trend and more people will be willing to put in the work it might happen less often because it is harder because it's instruments but like also all those all those influences going together i think is really cool but yeah so it's awesome that you're hoping to expand the community outlook and have people be less separate on that side, especially since, sorry, I'm just trying to tie back together what I yeah, originally said. Since it's cool. <laughs> I kind of went off on my own tangent and then we added to the tangent. I was just trying to draw it back in. It's what this show's all Yeah. <laughs> uh, so since the rap side has proven that we can do that, it would be really awesome if you're able to help the other side do that as well. And shout out uh, in Kendall Columbus for that, because yeah. I think they're really working toward that goal yeah. as well, interviewing a ton of different people on that side of things and getting them to know each other, hopefully. So shout out you guys. Uh, how, how was that interview? It was awesome. Yeah. They're really fun, aren't they? Yes. Yeah. I, I've also been on their show, so I thought that was... Uh, they're, they're, they're good interviewers. They are. They're really good for starting out. Yeah. yeah. I thought the same thing. Yeah. Much respect. To, to the podcast grind over there. <laughs> We're going to go ahead and take our routine half an hour break, and you are going to hear a message from your usual co-host, Zay Crypto, about dropping his debut EP, uh, Liftoff. So you're going to hear that here in a second. Hey guys, this is Zay Crypto, here to tell you about my debut project, Liftoff, dropping December 1st. This is the culmination of the past three years of my life put into music. It's a short EP, but it's my first time writing to my own instrumentals. My production skills have improved immensely this year, and this is just a taste of what's to come. In this project, I tried to display my versatility and express my innermost thoughts and feelings. I also want you to get a better sense of who I am as a person. Music has been such a huge influence in my life and has given me purpose when I had none. I want to create music that gives people strength, and I'm hoping that you'll find something in my music that makes you feel less alone. I have a very eclectic taste in my music, so it's hard for me to pin down what my style is. However, if you like hip hop, rock, or experimental music, then this EP is for you. Look for Liftoff on Spotify, Apple Music, SoundCloud, and all other major streaming platforms on December 1st. Thank you for your time. Now back to the show. Back in the place to be, as always. Alex, no, give me those podcast <laughs> ad libs. Uh, jumping jelly jam sandwich. <laughs> I tried to think of something before you hit the play button, and that was the best that came to me. I would. So that's what you're getting. I would be elated to hear that in the background of the song. Just you, like nonchalantly <laughs> saying that. <laughs> Let's get you a feature on Omega uh, Omega Music. <laughs> Jumping jelly. <laughs> I get a hard I can trap beat more. going. <laughs> Jumping jelly jack jam sandwiches. <laughs> I, I, will, I will sample the hell out of that. Let's do it. Yes. Perfect. So, 
I have a long, unorganized tangent that I would like to have happen. Are we ready for this? Let's go. I'll get the broom out. <laughs> <laughs> Start cleaning up. It's, it's over. Um, so, one thing that I am particularly passionate about is stand-up comedy. And I feel like I mentioned that on a couple episodes, probably. But one thing about new trends in stand-up comedy, as opposed to former decades, maybe, uh, is that you don't really get a solid fan base and you don't get a <laughs> good audience for stand-up comedy unless you are giving an authentic personal story, something that is true to you. And while that may have been taken a little bit too far with Louis C.K., uh, we, we can all learn from that experience. So I, I notice a little bit of of that trend in the way that you present yourself on social media and through your music is that I, I can, I, I, there's this innate sense of like, oh, this is completely real. This is something that has not been doctored at all and that you feel comfortable enough in, in that context to just be like, here's me. So yeah. I think that's really cool and I wanted to hear more of your opinions on that and like the overall trend that's going on with, with that attitude. Yeah. Um, I just feel like, you know, you're not going to get anywhere if you're not authentic. Um, and there's really only so much about me. Like, I don't feel like, it's like, why would I want to put all my effort into like making a persona like Lady Gaga or something when I could just simply tell people about who I am. And plus I've just been writing music my entire life about how I feel and um, just the experiences that have happened to me, um, the situations I've been in. So I just um, kind of developed my brand around that. Cool. And where does the name like uh, Wings come from? Like where does this whole uh, uh, aesthetic of, you know, the, the fairy kind of thing? Yeah. Um, hmm. I, it literally just came to me one day. Yeah. Um, plus, like, fae, it means fairy. And so I just, I'm like, oh, well, that kind of works out, doesn't it? And so, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that does make sense. <laughs> and plus, it's, like, mystical, and um, I'm like that. I like to, you know, believe in stuff, and just, like, mythical creatures and stuff are cool. So, yeah, and there's a lot of different ways you can look at it. Um, you can look at it as, you know, just a fun way, um, just like a fun brand, like, oh, she likes unicorns, I like unicorns, or you could like take it like super serious and look at it from like an inspirational point of view, um, just like you need freedom in your life and escape and everything, and so, you know, yeah, so. Cool. Yeah, it's <clears throat> it's definitely, I I definitely appreciate an artist much more when I feel like they're being genuine and I don't feel like I'm getting just some, I mean, there are people that it works for like Lady Gaga mm -hmm. where it's like, okay, that's just a thing. That's just a persona. But like most music that I like actively consume, when you feel like someone's just kind of BSing, it's not, it's not the same. Like you're just like. Yeah. I, I do have to say, it does make, when you take that route, it does make branding a lot harder. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, I think it's worth it. I agree. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But we can't forget about the most authentic artist of all time, which is Little Pump. Because he dropped out of Harvard <laughs> to save the rap game. And I think that is his real life story. Uh, <laughs> You're right. I'm sorry. <laughs> we should just only listen to Little Pump and nothing else. Never again will I ever consume any other artist. <laughs> That's all I need. That's the example I follow. I don't know about y'all, but... <laughs> Um, so I imagine that there are some people in your personal life, uh, before you really started getting into music professionally that influenced you to be that way. Uh, like who are your biggest personal and musical influences that really got involved? Um, hmm. Hmm. 
Alonzo Zavala. <laughs> <laughs> um, He's the co-host that I kindled. I, uh, okay. Huh. I guess I'm going to have to go with my mom. Okay. Um, like, I grew up, well, mostly with my mom and my sister and myself. We all lived in this, the same house. Um, she was really into pageants, um, just the performing part of things. Yeah, she wasn't, like, super serious about it like I am. Um, but I just, I grew up in that realm of, like, art. And my mom just really encouraged art um, and just the freedom in her household. Um, so I was always really thankful for that. And she she just always encouraged like to be yourself. Um, you know, you don't have to be like everybody else. You don't have to follow, you know, certain trends. And I know this is, this is gonna sound weird, but, well, it may sound weird, but um, I was like a super, super Taylor Swift fan um, when I was like really young, like 10, 11, 12. Um, and so like that was a part of like who she was. She was authentic and encouraged, you know, her fans to just be themselves. And that really um, encouraged me a lot. Um, and then just recently I got into grunge music, hmm. like punk rock and everything. And I, I'm still on that kick, but um, I, I studied it, you know, like I studied my favorite artists of that genre and um, they're just so true to their art and um, like they just don't care. And that's something I've always, that really inspired me. And so like, that's also, it's opened up my, um, I guess just my songwriting, like I'm able to I wrote a song, it's called As I Am, and it was it was kind of inspired by Pearl Jam, not necessarily the lyrics, but like the melody of it. That's cool. Um, and so that was new, like I've never really written anything like that. Um, so, yeah. Cool. And you mentioned uh, that your, your mother allowed for musical freedom in the house, mm -hmm. and I noticed that you, you say in a lot of your bios and videos that music is freeing for you uh, yes. and that doing it independently and not needing anyone is a very important part, aspect of that um, absolutely so how would have been like some unprecedented difficulties that you didn't realize would happen in the process um you need people yeah you do like just because you're doing it yourself um doesn't mean doing it alone that's something I've heard a lot over this past year. Um, and it takes a lot of hands, um, which makes it difficult because like, I, I'm not rich. I don't have a lot of money. I'm, I'm 22. I'm a nanny. Um, and I guess it, it's something to work up to. And just like, it's really important not really important it would be nice if you could just have people in your life just to help you get it launched like without having to pay them but that's not always guaranteed you know like I mean you can't just expect someone to give like 75% of their time to help you launch your career um, that's been a difficulty um, but like at the same time if you play your cards right and really stay focused you can launch it you can launch your career you can make this your business um it takes a lot of work but doing it that way you'll have a lot more freedom um and it's going to be on your terms more than it would be like with a label or yeah so and what's the biggest difficulty in that work that you've seen like independent work yeah um like booking or no surprisingly no hmm. it was at one point for me but um i'd say making music yeah because that's like a whole nother skill and i if i absolutely have to i would sit down and teach myself like audio engineering stuff and like producing um 
but it's like it's hard to find time to do that but it's also hard to find somebody who has that skill and you can really vibe with and they understand you to be able to produce your stuff um so definitely that yeah the audio mastering uh aspect of things is like we have we're lucky to have so many people in this city that know what they're doing but there's such a a curve mm -hmm. to learning that stuff like <clears throat> like uh again luke Gioka, i keep bringing him up <laughs> but it's a friend of the show he's a friend of the show you for Come this on. no he's not paying um <laughs> is he the sponsor of the show <sighs> maybe eventually <laughs> up. um but there's so many things that where we'll have a conversation about it and like it's his thing it's his thing you know he's so deep into it and he's done he's taken so much time to figure it out and uh there's so many things that he'll he'll say like a technical term to me and my brain will just fall out of my head like i just don't <laughs> i don't get it and, and then other people are like yeah i know what you're talking about and i feel like i'm relatively versed because i've been i've been talking to people about the creation of music for a long time not a long time but like relatively long time relatively yeah. speaking and there's just the, the the you can't learn how to do it from just listening you have to do it yourself Mm -hmm. That's that's the biggest thing because a lot of things you can just pick up from hearing people talk about it enough, but that's like you have to go to classes for this. Yeah, you know mm -hmm. that's, we, that's real. We do at least we're lucky that Ohio has a recording workshop, which is a very nice mm -hmm. program in Lancaster. I think I have a couple of friends who went there and learned a lot. <laughs> cool. But yeah, because if, if someone, if whoever's like doing that side of it is bad at it, no matter how good what you're doing is, it sounds like shit. That's true. It's yeah. like shit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you, you can be <laughs> the best artist in the entire universe. And yet, if you have poor mixing quality, like it yeah. just, it tanks you. It's yeah. crazy. Yeah. How necessary that side of things is. So shout out everybody that does that. Yeah. Uh, Really, yeah, for real, <laughs> for real, and and the the innovation that's come to it in the past twenty years or something, just the the crazy amounts of money that people have to spend on gear and stuff like that, it's yeah. just insane. So it's just as key as the editor to making a film. Mm -hmm. That's true, <laughs> very true. What would you like people to know about you, if nothing else, hmm. from the general public? When, when, when someone thinks of Faye, what should they associate it with? Um, hmm. Connection. Yeah. Love. Freedom. Authenticity. Hmm. Um, hope. Happiness. Positivity. Yeah. We're just trying to connect ourselves to street signs. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's awesome. <laughs> I love that. Yeah, those, those are all very nice things to be shooting for. That is a really good set of words. Yeah. Like that. <laughs> and, like, I've, I think I'm doing a good job, too, because, like, I get a lot of people who tell me they see my posts and they're just automatically just, their spirits are higher. Um, which is kind of like, I'm like, oh, really? Like, <laughs> but... That's kind of what I'm shooting for, um, just to let people know that they're wanted, they're loved, um, that you can do anything you want to do. It's just all up here. Um, yeah, so. Cool. You do project just a very calming aura. Like, I have to say, like, say anytime I do any of these, I'm always very nervous, but, like, you just, you do, like... I don't know. I just feel very That's at ease awesome. right now. And I make you nervous. No, I'm just no. <laughs> I'm totally I wouldn't say that. <laughs> but you're, you know, you, you have a very energetic persona. You're very. I'm not saying that to insult you in any way. No, okay, I'm just making sure. <laughs> like you're energy. very like. It's it's a very because I usually don't talk this much ever. <laughs> That's why I think that's why I'm talking so much because I'm getting two completely different like auras hitting me at the same time. Hmm. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I just wanted to add that. I was gonna say it off, but since it's related. Oh, well, thank you. <laughs> cool. Yeah, I try to. I try to do that. So that makes me feel good. Thank you. Always, always gotta. 
How do you, how does the, the meme vibe check go? I don't even, I feel like I'm part of the generation that should understand, but Yeah, that, that's you, that's not me. I'm too, I'm too old for that. I'm like, fucking 45. <laughs> that's this? how I feel sometimes. Professional vibe checker. <laughs> Uh, um, where can people find you? Where can people find your music, your social media? Yeah, um, Shows. I promise this is the last time I changed my username. It's Faze Song um, on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, or you can just go to my website, phasesong.com. Everything's there. Um, yeah. Cool. Do you have any shout outs to make? Even though I've completely littered the episode with shout outs. <laughs> Um, huh. Are there any left? <laughs> um, no, I really don't have any. Except, like, shout out to you for having me on here. Much appreciated. Yeah. <laughs> shout out to you for making the time to come out. You know, you had this plan for, like, three months or something. <laughs> it, I've been so busy, though, so I don't mind. Okay. Um, yeah. Cool. Do you have any shout outs? Uh, Foz, is that his name? Foz, yes. Foz. Shout out Foz. <laughs> Shout out Foz for this probably being the one episode you can't hear him at all because yeah. I, I haven't heard him a single time. I need to go check on him after this episode. See what's going on. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for listening. Hopefully on Wednesday morning, probably. Because that's when these come out. But uh, if you're not on that mailing list, you know. You don't know what's happening in the next two weeks. But if you join that mailing list you know what the next two episodes are going to be coming up. So get on that train, become a pedestrian, become part of the movement. Every time you see a street sign outside, you should think of us. That's what we're aiming for. The best street. Yes. Gab Street. <laughs> the street that you can only walk on. Uh, I think that's the joke. I don't know. We haven't, I'm not I keeping track of our own, our own memes. I thought it's the street that you talk on. I mean, talkative turnpike, you know. It's <laughs> talkative turnpike, I <laughs> like that. That was one of the, ga the gauge proposed. <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, That's, yeah, you, sh you should work that in more. I, I love that wordplay, <laughs> talkative turnpike. Yeah, we, had a, we had a bunch of different ones, but yeah. Uh, so thank you for listening this week. Thank you for coming on this week. Thank you for both for making the time and driving out here to the boonies. No, I'm just kidding. No, downtown Columbus. Street. Uh, <laughs> it's my favorite street in all of Columbus. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we will catch you next Wednesday morning. Thank you very much. <laughs>